Listen to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 16, 17, 18, and 19. I pray that from this glorious unlimited resources, His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts if you trust Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand all, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And while I fully understand that Paul wasn't referring to Christmas at this time and in this letter in Ephesians chapter 3, it does deal and it does teach us how we can experience the true meaning of Christmas. Not just one time a year, but every day. Every day we ought to experience the fullness of Christmas. So I want to talk to you this morning for just a moment on this thought. Put the Mary in Christmas. I refuse to go in a store or to talk to an individual if they say happy holidays. I refuse not to respond without saying Merry Christmas. And if they say nothing, I bring it up and say Merry Christmas. It's a huge statement and I want us to look at that this morning. Let's pray, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, that name that we celebrate as a newborn baby this time of the year. God, we know that there's been a lot of people that's been hurting. There's been a lot of people that have seen devastating things. A lot of people that have dealt with stuff that they didn't really ask for, didn't want, still don't want. But God, you're still faithful. And you still love us. Jesus, you're still the Savior of humanity. And we thank you for that. God, help us when we get through here today. When we, when we go back and the live stream is off and we're back with our families and we're back at home and we're dealing with getting ready for this big event on December 25th. Help us get our minds off of Santa Claus. Get our minds on the real reason that we celebrate this holiday and that is because your son God Jesus Christ was born and that's what makes Christmas what it is and that's exactly how we put the Mary in Christmas in Jesus name we pray amen amen so how do we really put the Mary in Christmas I believe it was Paul when he wrote these scriptures to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 3, I believe it was Paul's uh, words that bring us to the mindset that we can arrive at, that we can have a Merry Christmas in spite of everything else that's going on. And there were some things that really stuck out to me in this scripture, some things that really brought me uh, to, to this message this morning that stuck out to me. And, and I believe that these things that Paul wrote, and these things that Paul said, could very easily be equipping us to have a Merry Christmas every day of our lives. And the first thing, and I want you to write these down, I want you to keep good notes so that you can go back and study it throughout the week. I think one of the worst things in the world we can do as, as anybody listens to somebody preaching or teaching the Word of God is just take it at face value. So we need to, I need you to study the Word of God. God wants you to know the Word. You find freedom and you find truth in the Word. Number one is this, write this down. Getting inner strength through His Spirit. Getting inner strength through His Spirit. Paul used the word empower. Verse 16, he said this, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. That word empower means to give someone the authority or power to do something. To give someone the authority or power to do something. That's to empower them. 
I read a history story the other day. Most of you know I, I love history. And in that history story, there was a, a about the Titanic. And they were talking about some stuff the other day on the, on the news about the Titanic. And, and it, it made me get inquisitive. And so I, I found out something that I didn't know because it's not depicted a whole lot, if any at all, in the movie. But the Titanic, you know, was not supposed to be sinkable at all. But there was a distress call that the Titanic gave out when they found out they were in trouble and the, the sinking was taking place of the Titanic. The distress call went out, and it went out to a ship by the name of the California. That ship called the California was in five miles of the Titanic. They could literally and visibly see on the dark horizon faintly the lights of the Titanic, and they were they were giving them, trying to give them radio response, but their radio man wasn't there, and he had already taken off for the night. The California had stopped because they felt like the waters were not safe to travel through. But the problem is, is they didn't respond to the calls for help until the next morning. And by then, another ship had already uh, answered their call, and, and they finally had a radio man on the California now. They found out what was going on. And when they asked the captain of the California, when they said, Captain, why in the world didn't you respond? What happened that you didn't go forward and you didn't respond? And this is what he said, and I quote, We had banked our fires and didn't have the power to reach them in the ice-cold water. They were that close within five miles, but they didn't respond because of lack of power. Is that a description of the Christian today? Is that a description of God's church today? That we can't reach the lost, that we can't have Merry Christmas, that we can't ex expect to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 365 days a year because of lack of power? In Acts chapter 2, the disciples were instructed to stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit filled them with power. It was more than power to sing songs. It was more than power to speak in an unknown language or to interpret those languages. It was more, uh, or, or it wasn't just a power that they needed so that they could, uh, they could be seen or heard by other people. That power was given so that they could respond to God's will. That power is given to us today so we can respond to God's will. That, that power was given so, so we can have the, the ability and the power to fight the enemy that you see now has come in with a, with a vengeance and a force. You see it every day. That power was given so we can reach those who are desperate. That power was given so we can point people to the abundant life that Jesus has for them. Listen, Jesus died, was resurrected, and ascended to heaven so we could be empowered by His Spirit. There's an amazing difference in the boldness of this man named Peter in the Bible. Between the time that Jesus was arrested and the time that Acts chapter 2 takes place. When Jesus was arrested, Peter was hiding in the crowd. He was denying that he knew Jesus altogether. When, when Jesus was arrested, it got so bad that, that when a young lady asked and pointed out that Peter was a part of the Jesus crowd, Peter got so angry and, and literally so scared of being treated like Jesus was being treated that he began to use bad language and to begin to cuss and swear and say, I don't know the man. But when you bring him from that moment to Acts chapter 2, when he found himself in the upper room with 119 approximately other people, and, and when, when Peter was in that upper room and he had been endued, empowered with the power of the Holy Spirit, when he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, he met the crowd with a stand-up back, a straight-up shoulders, and he said, let me tell you about the power that lives in me. You see, Jesus done all that he done and ascended to heaven so the Holy Spirit could come down and empower us. You can be powerful during this Christmas season. You can be powerful in January. 
You can be powerful 365 days a year because it's not seasonal. Second thing is this. If you want to put the Mary in Christmas, give Jesus a place to live. Give him a place to live. Verse 17 says this, then Christ will make his home in your hearts. A home's not a place to visit. It's a residence. You feel more comfortable in your own personal home than you do anywhere else. In fact, everything's usually better at home. I mean, think about it. No bed sleeps like your bed at home. You, you, can, you can go anywhere you want to go. You can, you can be a part of the, 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 the biggest resort there is and have the most exquisite bed there is. But really, if you get to feeling bad, you really just want to be home. No recliner is more comforting and more controlling than my recliner at home. I, I, love, I got one of those electric recliners where you press the button. And, and sometimes it, when, when the legs are all the way down, it rocks. And I'll just hit that button back and forth and make the foot piece come out and just sit there and rock myself. I, I, I can, but I wouldn't want to do that at your house. When, when I lay in my recliner at home, my family might get upset if I snore a little bit while the TV's going, but I don't want to do that at your house. I don't mind plundering through stuff in my house. I don't mind getting up in the middle of the night if I want to and just plunder through some stuff in my house but I'm not going to come to your house and do that. You see, the secret to putting the Mary in Christmas is allowing Christ to live in us, giving him a place to reside, giving him residence in our hearts. That's what puts the Mary in Christmas. Three little boys, each of a different race, was watching a clown fill balloons with all kind of bright, vibrant colors with helium and letting them go and sail up into the air. This was, this was three little boys that hadn't been taught yet that there was such a thing as racism. They, they knew how to love and be around each other without having that problem. Just a side note. But the three little boys noticed that in all the colors of those balloons that were being filled up with this secret air and released into the air, they noticed that there was no black, brown, or white balloons. And since there were no black, brown, or white balloons, they, they decided they'd go up and ask Mr. Clown about those colors. And, and they walked up and they said, hey, Mr. Clown, we got a question. We notice there's no black, brown, or white balloons like us. So we, we want to know, we want to know if, if that stuff you're putting in those other balloons will work if you put them in balloons that are black, brown, or white. And the clown said, Mr. Clown said, oh, yeah. You see, boys, it doesn't matter what color the outside is. It's what's on the inside that makes the balloon go up. My friend, it doesn't matter what you can prove on the outside. It doesn't matter what you got on the outside. It doesn't matter what color your skin is on the outside. It doesn't matter where you came from on the outside. What matters is what you have on the inside. That makes the difference, and that will determine whether you go up or not. Give Jesus a place to live. Number three, to put the Mary in Christmas, you got to be rooted and grounded in God's love. Verse 17 says this, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. We look around a lot of times and we think, boy, people are, people are falling apart and people are you know, giving up and they're quitting and they don't pray no more and, and they don't go to church anymore and they don't this anymore and they don't that anymore. And we wonder... It might be because the roots aren't going down into God's love because that's what keeps us strong. Love is a powerful thing, yet it's often misused. That's a four-letter word that's flung out there in all kind of crazy ways. But why? Because sometimes we try to love when the fruit is coming from the wrong root system. Listen to what was written in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Now what it seems like is this time of the year, for some crazy unknown reason, people seem to love easier. 
I mean, what other time of the year do, do you just buy people gifts and give them to them? I mean, you've heard me say this many times. Several people have. Several of you have. That it, it, Christmas is the time of the year where we buy gifts that we can't afford with money we don't have for people sometimes we don't even like. But this time of the year, we, we seem to love people easier. There's something about Christmas and the lights and the songs and the atmosphere and the season that we're in that causes us to reflect more on the good than it does cause us to reflect on the bad. Listen, Jesus wasn't born for a seasonal event. He didn't die on the cross for an annual feeling that we get because the weather has changed or because there's certain decorations that are up. He didn't defeat hell, death, and the grave just so we could sing a Christmas carol or send or receive a Christmas card in the mail. He did it all so we could know and share His love with everybody we come in contact with. You see, when we show people the love of God, it draws them to the Lord. It's not us, it's what's in us. And when we show them the love of God that is in us, it draws them to the Lord. The love of God puts the Mary in Christmas. Now, you can't show His love. You really can't possess His love until you do number four. And number four is this. Attempt to comprehend God's love. Just attempt it. Very important word, attempt. Listen to verses 18 and 19 in our text. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, watch this, though it is too great to understand fully. Almost sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? May you have the power to understand, though it's too great to understand fully. Really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I know what you're thinking. If the Bible says that God's love is too great to understand, then why bother? Why bother trying to figure it out? Because the more you try to figure it out, the deeper you'll find that it runs. The, the more you try to search out and understand the Word of God, the deeper you'll find that it goes into the hearts of you, your, your personality, who you are, who you are as a believer, who you are as one that trusts. And the deeper it goes, the more you'll love Him. I've said this before, and it's a joke, but it, it's really true. You want to know who loves you the most? Men. Take a dog, your dog, and your wife and lock them in the trunk of your vehicle. Come back in an hour and open that trunk and find out which one's glad to see you. It'll be the dog, I can promise you. You ain't got to go home and try it. I'm telling you, it'll be the dog. The dog will be wagging his tail. The wife will be bopping you in the head. So you just don't go try it. Take my word for it. But when you, when you start even trying to look and figure out the love of God, when you say, God, if, if you could love me in this place, how can you do that? And then you get there and you see that He's loving you in that place. It lets you know that no matter where you are in life, His love just keeps loving you. The deeper it goes, the more you'll love Him. And the more He loves you, you, you won't have any choice. It's just something about our spiritual man, something about our na nature that causes us to love Him more. You remember John 3.16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loves so deeply and He loves so much. Listen to Romans 8, 38 and 39. I love this. He said, And I am convinced that nothing can ever, ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, he said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and listen to his confession, and I am the worst of them all. Paul said that. 
You, you, you talk about somebody that didn't deserve the love of God, didn't deserve the love of Christ, but got it? Paul. Paul's writing to his, his little buddy Timothy, his, his confidant, his, his young brother or his young son in the Lord. And he said, listen, he came into the world to save sinners. And, and, and I'm the worst one of them all. What he was saying was, Timothy, if he'll love me, he'll love you. If he'll love me for what I've done and love me through what I've done, he'll love you for what you've done and love you through what you've done. I heard a story this, this past week about a little boy that was on a hike with his dad. They were walking all up through the North Georgia mountains and they got to this very high peak. And they just sat down and they started looking around at all the beauty, all the beauty that was around them. And the, the dad started telling his son, he said, son, I just want you to know that God loves you so much. God created all of this. The little boy said, daddy, just how far does God's love go? The dad said, son, you, we're sitting up here on this peak and you see all this. He said, God's love goes just as far as your eyes will let you see. All the way around you. Completely all the way around. And the little boy got up and he stood on the peak of that mountain, the pinnacle of that mountain they were on, and he just made a complete circle and he just walked all the way around in a circle and looked around, sit back down by his dad and, looked, and he said, well, you know what, Dad? I guess that means that we're sitting in the middle of God's love right now sitting in the middle of it listen to me my friend the lord doesn't have to love us but aren't you glad he does aren't you glad that he loves us his love puts the mary in christmas number five is this fill up on god now i know people are going to fill up on eggnog and they're going to fill up on pumpkin pie and they're going to fill up on cakes and they're going to fill up on divinity and they're going to fill up on all kind of cookies and, and all kind of things that that we make all during this season. I don't know why it is y'all won't make the right cakes during the year. You just wait till Christmas. I don't know why the pies have to wait till, till the end. That's just a throw out there just a hint. But he said, fill up on God. I think sometimes we spend too much time, probably too much money, and too much effort on filling up on everything but God. Listen to what the verse said, verse 19 said in our text. Then you'll be made complete with all of the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Listen to these three words in the definition, fullness. The state of being filled to capacity. Life, the period between the birth and death of a living thing. Power, a supernatural being, deity, or force. So what's he saying here? What is he writing in that scripture? He's saying from the time of your new birth, be filled to capacity with a supernatural force that only comes from God. It only comes from God. In closing this morning, I don't know of anybody that wants to have a bad Christmas. I don't know of anybody that just, you know, we see the movie Scrooge and think about that. Maybe we've even talked about people that are Scrooges in our lives. I don't know. If you have it, I have. Man, they just, they just want to be a Scrooge. But you know what we find out about that guy in, in the movie Scrooge was deep down inside, he didn't want to have a bad Christmas. He just didn't know how to have a Merry Christmas. And while I've never seen anybody that really wanted to have a bad Christmas, I have seen people try to have a Merry Christmas without doing it God's way. And guess what? Deep down inside, just like Mr. Scrooge, they're miserable and they're disappointed. Every year, year after year, they're miserable and they're disappointed. Why not do it God's way and put the Mary in Christmas? You know, I've talked to people before that told me, that, you know what? Some of the best Christmases I ever had was the ones that we had the least amount of money and could do the least amount of gifts and the least amount of stuff. Several years ago, when Richard Nixon was president, we went up to the 
Ella Jane to the North Georgia mountains to spend Christmas, Christmas with my grandfather. He was an old mountain man, lived in a, an old shack of a house, and right out the back door was this big old gully that went down into the deep. It, was, it had snowed, and it was during an energy crisis. And we went out on the backside down in that big deep gully and went up on the hill. We cut down a little pine tree and we brought it back to the house, stood it up, and I'm sure my dad or granddaddy, one of them just made a little holder for it on the bottom. We popped popcorn and cut paper up and colored things. No lights and we hung it on that tree. And my oldest sister Kathy, she she wrote President Nixon a letter and told him what we did. He said, we, we conserved energy this year, and he wrote her back. She's probably still got that letter from President Nixon and said, Dear Kathy, I want to thank you for conserving energy and being a part of this whole thing about energy conservation. And I can think back on a lot of Christmases, but that one really sticks out in my mind of that little Christmas tree. It wasn't tall. It didn't have a bunch of bright lights. There wasn't a bunch of presents under the tree, but that one really sticks out. Because we really enjoyed a merry Christmas. Now let me give you a special note this morning. I know this year's been tough. I know it's been rough. It's been rough for all of us. It's been decision after decision having to go here or not go there not going to see family or do we go and you've got all this stuff what about our jobs what about our income what about groceries what about this and, and we as a church just like many of you have done everything we could possibly think of to stay safe and yet and still people got sick people tested positive for coronavirus People have had to deal with that stuff. Now rest assured, the hardest thing in the world for a pastor to do is to tell people not to come to church. Man, I can't stand that. Big decision. And I don't take it lightly, and I didn't, I didn't come to that conclusion by myself. I contacted other pastors and talked to them and got their advice. I talked with Pastor Jay. I talked to our board members. But then I had to say it. I had to, with my mouth, I had to say it. It's going to be doing in-person church. Let's just hold off. But I realized something while I was getting ready with this message. Putting Mary in Christmas is not about who's in the church building. It's about who's inside of you and me. Christmas isn't about a Christmas tree or a present or especially not a P-R-E-S-E-N-T. It is about His presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. His presence. Having the Spirit and the power of God living in us. It's about who's in us. That's what Christmas is about. Put the Mary in Christmas. Because when you do that, by doing it God's way, this Christmas will stick out in your mind like you never dreamed it would. When you start understanding that this isn't just a seasonal thing, this isn't just something we celebrate now. We get to celebrate who Jesus is every day that we live. Because He lives in us. Oh, I miss you not being in the building. I want you back in the building come January. I'm going to preach a message titled The Importance of the Boat. Be like Forrest Gump. There's my boat. But the importance of the boat. We're coming back January the 3rd. And I want you here. I want you to be safe. But we want you here. And I want you to have a Merry Christmas. Not based on presents or get together as a family or even get together as a church based on who lives in you and what he's doing in you because decent
December 25th, should the Lord tarry his coming, December 25th will come and 24 hours later, it'll be December 26th. From then, the time Jesus calls us home, we need to have a Merry Christmas. We need to put the Merry in Christmas. Let me pray for you this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, what a sweet, sweet name that is. God, it's, it's almost like you can smell Jesus. And it's a sweet aroma. When you say your son's name, Father, it's, it's, it's almost like you can feel this warm blanket and this sweet aroma just filling the air. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for teaching us what you've taught us in the past 10 months. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to exercise our faith greater than we ever faced and exercised our faith before. God, I'm praying for every person that's hearing what I'm saying this morning their hearts would just open up to receive the word of God and that they would put the Mary in Christmas so that they can literally have on the inside of them, mind, body, soul, and spirit, a very Merry Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much. God bless you. Merry Christmas, life.